So how do we do a flitch beam calculation for a flat roof? This is the second part of a two-part tutorial and in this part of the tutorial we're going to take this same flat roof that was six meters by four meters and what we've done is we've divided the span here with a flitch beam and the roof is spanning now from left to right rather than from top to bottom and the span of the roof is three meters. So the first thing to do is to just look at what our loadings are going to be and just for the purposes of this calculation I'm going to say that the factored load, so that's the load after we've applied a load factor to it, is two kilonewtons per square meter on that roof. So what's the line load going to be? which is the, line, the load that goes along the line of that beam. What's the line load going to be on that beam? Well, it's going to be 3 metres multiplied by 2 kilonewtons per metre squared. And the reason for that is because we're taking this part of the roof here as the contribution of load on our flitch beam. So it's this dimension here which is 3 meters. So the line load is 3 meters times 2 kilonewtons per meter squared which is equal to 6 kilonewtons per meter. The next thing we need is the moment and a simple formula for the moment is WL squared over 8 and that's as long that uh, formula is valid as long as your beam is simply supported, which means that it's supported at each end and it, ha and it has a uniformly distributed load uh, along the full length. So WL squared over 8, let's do that calculation. So W is our line load, so that's 6, and L is the dimension here 4 meters which is the span of the beam 6 times 4 squared over 8 so let's do this calculation 6 times 4 squared over 8 and the answer is 12 12 kilonewton meters so that is the moment and that's the value which you're going to use to design the flitch beam. Okay, so far so good. The flitch beam looks something like this. There is a rectangle of steel flat and it's encased in two or more timbers either side. So if we take it in section, so basically we've sliced through and shown, and shown now what's within this beam. We have a steel flat, let's say it's 10 by 120, and let's say the timbers are 50 by 125, and that's millimeters. So how do we work out the strength of this flitch beam? Well, the simplest way of doing it is to use the timber simply as a restraint, which means that this beam can't really buckle this way or this way. And as long as we also have timbers trimming in from either side here, so we've got our roof timbers trimming in because we've got our roof spanning from left to right. Then we can count this beam as being fully restrained. Fully restrained. And what that means is we don't need to worry about buckling. Now if we don't need to worry about buckling then we can develop the full bending stress bending strength of this beam and use a very simple formula for that. So the bending strength which is the 
moment resistance is equal to the allowable stress or the yield stress of the steel multiplied by BD squared over 6. Now that little formula here we call that Z and you'll probably see that on other videos of mine uh, if you have then that might make some more sense to you but suffice it to say for this calculation that's the stress, the allowable stress, or the yield stress of the steel. So if we're using it in, in terms of finding out the strength, then we'll call it the strength. Yield strength. And that's the value of Z. So let's do that calculation. If we're using 275 grade steel, then our yield strength is 275 multiplied by 10 multiplied by D depth which is 120 squared so we can see here straight away that the depth is the most important thing because that's a squared value the width of the steel doesn't matter so much which is why a flitch beam is so effective because you've got most of the steel within the depth rather than in the breadth BD squared over 6. So let's do that calculation. 275 times 10 times 120 squared divided by 6. So we can see that's a large value, 6.6 .6 million. So we'll call it 6.6 .6 times 10 to the 6 and that's just notation that we use in engineering and science to be able to write essentially how many zeros are on there so 6.6 .6, and the units is newton millimeters now we want to get that in kilonewton meters so multiply by a thousand and multiply by a thousand again to change newtons into kilonewtons and to change millimetres into metres. So actually we're just scrubbing that bit and we've got 6.6 .6 kilonewton metres. So that's the strength of this particular flitch beam. 6.6 .6 kilonewton metres. It's, as we can see it's actually half the strength that we wanted it to be. We wanted it to be 12. So the easy solution here really is to put two in so we'll put them in here at third points rather than one just right in the middle or we could double up the amount of steel in there and make that 20 which would double that value to 13.2 kilonewton meters so that's how to design a flitch beam. Leave me any comments in the comment feature below. Don't forget to download your span tables to work out what size of timber roof rafters that you need in the first place. So the reason we're doing this uh, flitch beam calculation is because we may want to get a thinner roof so for example using 47 by 120 timbers rather than if we had to span the whole of this four meters with our rafters then we would need to go with according to this table 47 by 195 so you're going to save yourself a fair bit of money um, and i've just had a comment on my previous video where someone had to buy the, the 47 by 220s um, and it cost them £1,200 just to, to put up a flat roof just for the timber. So there should be savings here all around, both in the depth of your roof, at the speed at which you can install it, uh, and also the, the cost of timber.